Fandom, how's it going? Today we're going to be talking about the Omega Men, and we're going to see if this much-beloved and critically acclaimed series written by Tom King and art by Barnaby Bagenda is worth your hard-earned cash. So, let's get into it. The Omega Man was a 12 issue miniseries that was originally part of the DCU initiative and what the DCU initiative was that basically DC Comics said you don't need to worry about continuity, continuity has been completely thrown out the window, we are just having our writers write great stories. Now for the most part, the DCU initiative wasn't that great, there were a lot of bombs with the exception of the Omega Men. The Omega Men centers around the character of Kyle Rayner. Now for those of you that don't know anything about Kyle Rayner or the Omega Men themselves, don't worry about it. Because of the DCU initiative, you can actually jump into this and you will be perfectly fine. At the start of the story, Kyle Rayner is tasked to go to the Vegas system. And for those of you that don't know, the Vegas system is essentially a group of planets that are completely cut off from the rest of the universe. It is to the point where the Green Lanterns aren't even allowed to wear their power rings or to enforce laws there. What essentially is happening is that Kyle Rayner has been brought to the Vega system to kind of broker a peace treaty between the Omega Men and the politicians and the kings and leaders of that system. Kyle Rayner soon finds out that joining the rebellion of the Omega Men could mean the freedom of hundreds of galaxies and planets. What I like so much about this is that there are no black or whites, there are no great victories here, there are no happy endings for a lot of these characters. The fact is that war is hell and the Omega Men definitely show it. For those of you that don't know, Tom King was a CIA agent in post 9-11 Afghanistan and the fact is that in the Omega Men you get a sense that Tom King had to deal with a lot of crap that the Omega Men are dealing here with corrupt politicians, with choices that were made that were very poor and with putting somebody into power that shouldn't be into power in the first place and with the fact that maybe you taking somebody out of power can make things worse than what they are. What I also love about this is just how well Tom King is able to flesh out all of these characters in 12 simple issues. From the stoic and quiet leader Primus, to the war-torn and battle-hardened Tigor, to the sympathetic character named Doc. These are all great and wonderful characters that I guarantee you, you will find something to love about each and every single one of these. And at the start of the story, you're gonna probably be thinking the same thing I did. These guys seem like they're not that great, they're selfish, they're in it for themselves. And at the end of it, the story really turns you around on them. There's one character in particular in here that when you find out her origin in issue eight, and you will know the moment, trust me, it is some of the most heartbreaking and heart-wrenching things that I've read in comics in a very, very long time. I am talking about the Punisher Max Slavers level. It is something that when I read, I put the book down and I went, oh my gosh, I'm telling you right now, you will know the moment when you read it and you will probably have the same reaction I will because of the fact that it's an allegory for the events of the Middle East and why we were there in the first place. Let's talk about the art. Oh my gosh, Barnaby Bagenda, what a talent to discover. The guy absolutely kills it. Each and every single panel that he draws is beautiful. It is stellar. So much so that the one fill-in issue where he doesn't do the art affects the story so much and you miss him in every single panel that he's not there. Barnaby Begenda likes to use the nine panel grid that was popularized by Dave Gibbons in the Watchmen series and he uses it to maximum effectiveness. I haven't seen a artist use this this well since Frank Quiley did it on Multiversity about two years ago. It is brilliant stuff. The art here is gorgeous. I am harping on this so much because this is one of these guys that he is an underrated talent and he needs the credit that he is getting for this series and more. The way that he uses the nine panel grid to show the passage of time on characters' faces as they go from one emotion to the other is something that is master class level stuff. Or how he uses the nine panel grid to show the passage of time throughout the series. There is a moment in the final pages of this book that shows Kyle Rayner reflecting on everything that has happened throughout the series that I really don't think would be as effective if it wasn't done in this format. 
I typically don't give a lot of love to colorists on these videos, but the fact of the matter is that Romulo Fajardo Jr. is stellar in this. The guy's work is brilliant here. Colors pop left and right. They're all over the place. Sometimes they accentuate each other. Sometimes they contrast with each other. It's something that I really don't see in other colorists, except for maybe like Dave Stewart. The guy is on point here. He is killing every single panel, and I love it. I love the art in this, all the way from the pencils to the colors. Books like these don't come around a lot, and let's face it, in a market that is absolutely oversaturated with comics that are full of heroes and capes and cowls and just minuscule and meandering and poor stuff that is done by authors with half hearts, this is something that I absolutely urge you to go out and pick up. I rate my books on a pass, borrow, or buy scale, and this is hands down one of the easiest buys that I have ever given a series. It is intelligent, it is massive in scale, it is brilliant the way it is written, the characters are fleshed out, the allegories are there for you to enjoy it, and if you want to ignore them, you can ignore them. Tom King has written a masterclass story that I think years down the road that people have been sleeping on will go on and reflect on it and it will be taught in college courses. This to me is as close to a perfect story that I have read in a long time and I'm giving this the Perfection Award. Perfection. Well, there you have it. Um, look, the Perfection Award is something that I just made up specifically for this series. I really don't give it out almost at all. This is actually the first book that I am giving this award to and it was something that I made up specifically because this was so good. So that tells you how great I enjoyed this story. I really do think that if you don't pick up the Omega Men, this beautiful 12 issue collection, you are really, really missing out on something special that years down the line, when people go back and look at Tom King's work, they're going to say, this is where this guy started. It is absolutely brilliant. It's heartbreaking. It's a reflection on war. And honestly, if you are sleeping on this, go out and pick this up. It'll run you like 20 bucks. And the minute DC, if you're watching this, the minute DC puts out an absolute edition, a day one buy for me. If this is your first time checking out my channel, I do weekly reviews of trade paperbacks, hardcover, special editions, omnibuses, absolutes. What don't I cover at this point? I do trailer reactions. Check out some of my other videos, please. I urge you. Comment, subscribe. Love you guys. Have a great week.